The act of living creates residue. However, not every residue needs to become trash. We can take cues from nature and learn to reinvent what we would call trash into treasure. After we are long gone, our generation will be known by what it left behind, be it heirlooms or waste. All of this here is not going to go to waste. Of course I could compost it. But there is a better solution to use this material to its advantage, to use it in its most honest form, and to frankly save money while doing so and living in style. I've seen a great garden tower made of twigs, and I'm going to try to replicate it. I think it's going to work. I've taken inspiration from a garden cloche made out of twigs from Jerry Lander's YouTube page. She has created a beautiful storybook inspired home and garden. It is a whimsical space she has christened as Hopalong Hollow. Besides being an artful gardener, she writes and illustrates storybooks. If you love the work of Beatrix Potter, you will certainly like her work as well. After having trimmed up some trees in my property to increase solar exposure to my future garden, I was left with many branches and sticks. I've chosen 13 branches that are about half an inch to quarter inch to quarter of an inch thick in diameter and about what a yard long and I'll use these as the main supports instead of disposing of all these branches I wanted to create an inventive garden towers to support vegetables like tomatoes or peas I was planning to do a cone shape similar to a classic French tuteur they would not be super tall structures since I was limited to the branch sizes I had available I tried to choose the most even sized and straightest branches to use as the spines. Of course, doing this out of bamboo would make it easier to source and build. It would allow me to make even taller structures, but I was working with what I had. I also looked forward to seeing how they would turn out. They were bound to have a more rustic look with less uniform branches. This bark here, it functions pretty much like rope. I don't know exactly what species this tree is. I'll probably research it. But I think this is gonna work perfectly for what I need. By peeling away the pliable bark from these elm trimmings, I ended up having everything I needed to weave these structures. It was going to be a truly locally sourced finished project since the peel bark would serve as the tying element in place of rope or string. With all the elements at hand, I had everything I needed to start the project. Children in white stare at the sky, running in circles, their dreams are denied. I just needed a few more tools and a place to sit in to weave this tower. technique I'm going to use is pretty straightforward. It's nothing more than basic weaving. You'll Once you get the hang of it, it becomes very simple. But you will need a guide, a template, to help you. And you need to drill holes around the circle. You can make the diameter as big or as small as you want, depending on how big of a structure you're looking for. And you want an odd number of holes, even sort of evenly spaced out. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is pretty much a handicraft you want to see the the human touch to it and once you have that you use that to, as a template to hold the spines now before I continue I will need to clean up these branches here because I don't need these things this is where using bamboo would be a benefit if you have access to it for free Once I had all the branches trimmed out, I was ready to start structuring the tower. I got a pot, placed it upside down on the floor, and set the circular template drilled onto the board 
over it so that I could insert in it one branch in each hole so that the structure could stand up by itself. This step is very straightforward. The hardest part is managing all the sticks at once and getting everything to stand up together. With all the spines converging in a point at the top, I got a piece of the bark and using it as rope, I tied the loose ends together. You can use any other type of rope-like material that you have available. Pliable vine-like grapes can also be used, although it may be less yielding and more prone to snapping. I then used smaller pliable twigs to start weaving a ring about a third of the way from the bottom, working in an over and under pattern. It is a good idea to use gloves to protect your hands while doing this. This can be cumbersome at first, but as the tower gains structures, it becomes easier. Coming up in the next block, I will show how this hump spun plant support turned out, right after this commercial. If you're loving the video and would like to help me produce more, you can purchase an original painting from my Etsy shop or support me through Patreon. Your direct support is the reason why I have been able to produce two episodes a week during the spring, so thank you. After roughly weaving in the bottom with thin twigs, I started to wind the rope-like bark around them, tying knots along the way around the spines. The purpose of this step is to reinforce the ring, so that all these spines are secured in place, giving the tower structural support. Although weaving can be a labor-intensive task, it is rather relaxing, and it is fun to see the object slowly materialize in front of your eyes. It is much more rewarding than going to the big box store and purchasing a ready-made plant tower. Weaving is one of our ancestral arts and can be found in all human cultures. Native peoples created beautiful baskets and other woven objects with masterful high-quality craftsmanship. This tradition is still practiced by a few descendants who keep the tradition alive, but in the peak of their use, these were not only utilitarian pieces for daily living, they were true works of art. Well, that's basically the technique. Now I just have to finish up this ring and then do two more rings here and tie the top, and that should be it. It's simple, it's just a little bit labor intensive. While buying ready-made objects sure is more convenient, the joy of handicrafts exists not only in the end product, but in the process itself. We are approaching a crossroads in innovation and manufacture, and soon enough, mechanization will supplant most human labor. Robots will dominate almost all areas of the economy, and humans may find themselves in the middle of an unprecedented existential crisis. Now that the two rings are done, I just have to untie this and reweave this part and perhaps make a little ball finial to make everything end up nicely. I do like the way it's turning out, it's very rustic, but at the same time a bit stylish. While I believe humans have intrinsic worth, much like any other living species on Earth should have, our social and economic structures divide us so that our worth becomes a function of our labor and not our mere existence. Our collective agreement is that hard labor and more precisely smart labor should be rewarded. Thus finding labor-saving techniques and building labor-saving devices bring with it a dividend to those who create them. Of course, by giving our labor to machines, we were relieved of pointless toil, but we began to lose our place of importance. Yes, we have had mechanization and industrialization for some time now, and people have adapted by becoming more educated and inventing new fields of work. But there may come a breaking point, as machines start not only to do the heavy and repetitive labor no human should be forced to do, but start to perform even intellectual and interpersonal services more efficiently than any human could at a fraction of the cost. We may find ourselves in a world where our role as humans will have to be reimagined. That could be good if the human mind is liberated in mass to create and imagine, but knowing human nature, I'm less optimistic. This will be the case economically and politically. There may be hard limiting factors for technological expansion, energy and resources like certain rare minerals needed to build machines, but it is hard to say. Certainly we may also end up destroying the natural environment that sustains us in the process, and that would spell doom. 
I just hope that in this process we don't trade out all our humanity for convenience. I hope we still find it in ourselves to admire and enjoy what the human hand can make, even if we are no longer obligated to depend on it to survive. When we choose to support local artisans and craftspeople, we validate their existence. We recognize their human work transcends just the utilitarian and has intrinsic value because it comes directly from a fellow human being. Yes, it is an argument over emotions, but emotions are a large part of what it means to being human.